A lot of folks ask me, does Revive widen the palette? Especially younger folks, like Gen Z folks love asking this question. They're all looking for wider dental palettes, right? Where they, like in the last five, 10 years, like 10 years ago, I never heard anyone asking this question really. But now it seems extremely popular and people like Mike Mew have kind of ingrained it and everyone says that we should have wide mouth palettes, right? And and I don't disagree. Like a wider dental palette is typically like a healthier thing than a narrower one is generally that your skull is more crushed. But I think that the way that people approach expanding their palette is often wrong and doesn't account for how the skull works. So one thing I've talked about is how I view that like a crushed or a narrow palette is a symptom of a crushed skull. You can look at it as like a palate is just one piece of this entire thing that we call a skull. And therefore, if it's crushed, like it cannot be crushed in isolation. Like you cannot have a perfect skull and just a crushed palate. If you have a crushed palate, it means like your entire skull is crushed. And therefore, when you try to fix this palate, you cannot just fix the palate. You need to fix the entire skull. It's kind of like a can, right? Like it's crushed a little bit. Like you got to blow up the entire can to fix you know one piece that is crushed how not to widen the palette so all these palette expanders especially the screw based ones but even the ones that claim to use the natural forces of the tongue like the bio block and the dna and some of these other ones like they all do the same thing wrong they use artificial force to try to push this palette wider right and they're 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 almost always like using the teeth as anchors. So they're like latching around teeth and they're just trying to force this palate open. And that is the wrong way to do it. Why? Because this soft tissue that I talk about, which you should think about as a balloon, is very strong. It is elastic, but it is very strong. And therefore, when you push this apart and this balloon doesn't change or expand, it is kind of like pushing a coke can against a wall the wall is the soft tissue the coke can is your palate right in order to at some point like the soft tissue is not going to be the thing that gives right like that that is going to remain where it is and you're just going to end up crushing this coke can that is exactly what people experience when they use palate expanders they're pushing the other cranial bones because there's 22 of them they're pushing them to make room for the fact that they push the palate open Right? So they have not fixed anything. They have just changed the nature of the problem. And they've usually introduced more asymmetry into their face and their skull, which is a story that you often hear them complain about after people use palate expanders. So basically, I believe that all palate expanders are wrong. And what is the right way to expand the palate? The natural, the correct way is through these biomechanics, right? What are the laws of these biomechanics? Let me repeat them. There's just two. Put vertical height between your upper and lower teeth so you gotta like put something between your teeth and the second one is make sure that you're not locking an occlusion meaning you're not locking how the upper and lower teeth come together right so a simple mouth guard like our revive will work or a myo brace or a shock doctor or a tooth pill like they all work they all work the same when you have that what happens is that this balloon that i talk about a soft tissue it's like putting an air pump into your ear and you're inflating it and how do you know that you're inflating well, it actually like rips through the face and the scalp if you're doing it quickly, right? So, which is why pr on pretty much any day, like if I were to show you right here, you could probably tell a little bit like skin is ripping. So my skin rips on a daily basis when I do this process and I do my stretches and it rips here and it rips in various parts of my face. And that is how I know that like something is expanding, right? If you don't get some kind of ripping or if this soft tissue balloon is not expanding and you're just pushing the palate open like you basically like the skull has stayed where it is and you're just pushing the inside so you're you're not expanding anything at the end of the day you're just pushing things out of place right and so that is the mental model you should have for palate expansion like these screw based palate expanders are just going to push everything so that this palate could be wider at the expense of the rest of your face and your skull. Pretty much you can come to expect that if you do palate expansion, you're going to have a more asymmetric face.
right? And that is what you'll hear time and time again from people that use palate expanders. When you do this process with Revive or MouthGuard or any MouthGuard, right, like you're going to see that the entire skull is going to inflate and your palate is going to get wider. And, you know, many people in Revive have noticed that their palates are getting wider at a pretty impressive rate. Like some some people, you know, like I, I don't track this necessarily, but, you know, a lot of people have posted about it and some impressive palate expansion among folks. And things like mewing and thumb pulling, like as I've said in the past, like those things all accelerate this biomechanical process. So I'm not against those things. I think they work great, but you, you do need to wear a mouth guard at night because those things improve curve of speed. And then the mouth guard also improves curve of speed. So you're constantly compounding your gains. So closing thoughts is to get back to the original question, does Revive widen the palate? Yes, it does, right? And and I've seen major palate changes on myself, you know, widening when I was improving and also like decreasing when I was doing the wrong thing back in back back in the past. So like I know that this is a very dynamic thing, and as long as you're doing the right biomechanics, like wearing a mouth guard, your palate will widen. And I've seen that on myself numerous times, and a lot of people are seeing it here and if given the choice between widening your palate through these biomechanics or using a palate expander i think like for me it's an absolute no-brainer because using a palate expander like orthodontists do will just expand the palate at the expense of the rest of your cranial bones and create more asymmetry because you're not actually expanding anything whereas using a mouth guard is like putting an air pump into your skull inflating the whole thing and the palate also inflates it expands and it's kind of like blowing air into a coke can like the whole thing just you're like pushing out the asymmetries so yeah thank you <laughs>